Hello, this is a June 4th update on Jacob uh, Adaram's road to Australia. He, in fact, is in Australia and anchored, moored there. Um, I have to double check on territorial waters claimed by Australia, but I would say you can say he's in Australia. Most people consider the Barrier Reef part of Australia. But anyway, he is anchored there, and the story about how he got blown up there in these very strong winds that he could not see the goal was to come up here, and here was his track doing beautifully, coming right along here, but he could not turn left here. It just was got up to be 25 and 30 knots of wind. He could not do it, so he just had to keep going. Then at some point here, he started to try to catch one of these you know, catch some shallow water to anchor in. Uh, there's patches of it near each of these reefs. And he finally did catch one and he's anchored here. But um, a, a couple things to talk about here. Um, first of all, this huge scatter in the positions. See, he's actually right here. And I added a new picture, by the way. Here's the reef, Flynn Reef, and here's where he's anchored. And in a moment, I'll show you a picture of what this looks like right here, where he is. But he's right there. These are all the GPS positions being reported back. And as we've, I've explained several places, this GPS position is so bad because the, uh, the tracking antenna is below decks, uh, and, it ha and it can't be changed, not at this point. It's been you know almost a full year in operation. It's too risky to try to change anything. But anyway, the tracking an antenna is below decks. You could read about that in the article I'll reference. And so this is about four and a half miles here. Now, if that had a proper antenna, these positions would all be located somewhere around here, within this little area, on this, on this, on these, in this sounding area right here, easily within right here you know, 100 meters, not, not uh, four and a half miles. But that's, uh, that's a problem that we've been dealing with. And these, in fact, are the averages of, uh, of uh, three and a half hour positions. That averages it out some, but not that much. And well, when he's at anchor, that, you'll have to read the, I got a blog post that discusses uh, this. Uh, but he's fixed, he's right here. So these, all these scattered positions doesn't mean anything right now. Once he starts moving, our averaging system works a whole lot better. Okay, but just to show that things haven't changed, here's the A-scat winds. Look at that. That's a, that's a pass. That's pass. Just He's been anchored since uh, yesterday evening, but and this was yesterday night, I think, or something. But you notice that's still 30. If you look up here, yellow is uh, going yellow is 20 this dark orange is uh, you know 25 this is above 25 right here and he's got you know 25 plus down in here and even strangely enough even the even the wind sat was this the one yeah even wind sat and shows these sort of dark orange arrows down here so he's still in very strong wind and uh, so the thing that's new that I added here is I, I, if you haven't downloaded the new one, I've got this new big area, and then I overlaid on top of that this zoom in of the actual reef he's next to. Okay, so let me leave that for there. Here then is a, just a quick look at, um, this is the latest of uh, FV3 GFS. Now, I haven't um, written it up yet, but we did a long study of it when he was waiting earlier to find the best, uh, find some hope for lighter air that never came, never came. And uh, when I write that up, you'll see that the FV3 GFS model, the so-called new GFS, goes into effect June the 12th. There will be no more FV3 GFS. When you get GFS, it will be this new model. And we'll have a lot to say about that. That's June 12th, an important day in U.S. meteorology. Uh, and so that's the best model. And if you look here, you see here's where he is right this minute. Well, he's anchored. That's right about here. But you see uh, that wind is um, 20 knots, 25 knots. This is out till Friday. There it's kind of backed around a little bit, but it's still strong. You know, still that little flashing yellow, that's even stronger. But we have another way to look at that. We can go up here. We don't have to follow a route now because he's anchored. So I can just turn this on and drag this. See this very nice presentation here. This is luck grip. This is the pressure. 
this is artificial here because it's switched over to every 12. See, see the data points step step. Now the data points are real big. So this is not smoothed out at all. This diurnal variation that you see here that goes on and on. It just artificially goes away here. But you see, here's the wind right where at his location now. And you see there's a 20, 20 knots is clear down here, top of these fingers, right? So it doesn't even get down to 20 knots till Thursday. And then it's right back up. So we don't see, I don't see any relief here whatsoever. Plus, on top of it, these are squalls here. And so he's got squalls coming in. He's had a lot of squalls, even, you know, all throughout the, the run up to the north, up to this anchorage, and um, so forth. You know, not an intended anchorage. He just had to grab wherever he could to get keep from getting blown to Papua New Guinea. Um, so he's he's safely hooked in here, hooked and moored, uh, right there. But unfortunately, no wind on, no good wind on the horizon yet. Uh, let me show now. Here's really something really neat. This is a picture he sent yesterday or last night, or actually just today actually just now um, and this is his boat and he's tied up here and um, I originally thought it's really what happened is, is he finally caught his anchor on some shallow water which is right here some shallow grounds right here is where he's hooked hooked in and uh, but then as he played out his line from his anchor he ended up um, this is a mooring buoy. There's these mooring buoys right here. So his anchor is back here behind me. Uh, yes, yeah, this is a mooring buoy. And so he's tied to this buoy, and I thought that was weird that the buoy's out there. But these are buoys that the dive boats go out and, ha and hang out and dive on, I mean an anchor on, and then they go on over. They, you know, they're anchored out here in this area, and then they go in and dive on this reef in here. Uh, now, uh, like that. And so that's where he is. Now, he said, I can't see it in the picture, but he said, looking forward here, he can actually see the, um, the um, greenish water where, where the reef is, but, uh, but I, don't, I don't see that. But look at this, though. I do want to show something. The, it, let's read the water a little bit here. You see these, the, and the key feature are these streaks. You see that, that, that streak, this streak, these streaks in the in the way, and this rather longish thing. Now this is a sign when you're reading the water that the um, uh, that you're getting up around 30 knots. Um, let me show you. Let's see here. Oh well, that's one. Well, what's this? Oh, this is the latest forecast. Look at this. This is the Cairns Coastal Waters. Cairns Coastal Waters. Southeast 25 to 30, reaching 30 in the afternoons. 25 to 30, 30 in the afternoons, north of Cape Grafton. And that's exactly where he is, by the way. Just, just to the side. Just right by Cape Grafton. And, and so forth. 20 to 25. So, yeah. So, so that's that. What I wanted to show here. Oh, okay. This is from Bowditch. This is a. This is the. Um, I'm digressing a little bit here, but this is a Beaufort wind scale as depicted in Bowditch. You can download this Bowditch online. It's 105 megabytes, and, and it's a wonderful reference book. And one of the parts of it's a, these pictures. Uh, I think originally from Canada. But they may have, I don't know, I didn't see the reference of the copyright to Canada, but these actually for, for years were copyrighted in Canada. But anyway, so this wind here is 17 to 25 knots. And now you go up here, 22 to 27. And you see, you don't see any streaks, and you see these kind of little short, little white, white or little white cap, a little shorter. Now you get to the range 28 to 33. And what happens is, right around that zone, you start seeing, see, these are a little longer, and they say that somehow, blowing streaks. And you see, you start to see these streaks. You start to see the streak. So that's just a turning point. That, that speed range is the turning point. And I, I've seen this before. This is actually a pretty good marker by looking at the waves to see, you know, here's below 30, you know, below 28. You don't see that. 
and then this. Then you go on up. Once you get up in a, like here, there's 34 to 40. Then this, then there's just blowing foam and streaks everywhere. But uh, so anyway, that's the point. Little exercise there, and we see that uh, here. We see these, you know, immodest and bright sunny day and so forth, but it's unusual. Bright, sunny, wonderful day and that strong wind. So here's where he is. What else do I want to say about that? Oh, okay, so here's where all these positions are from the GPS because that GPS antenna is underneath the solar panel below decks. But this is like four and a half miles from here, and here's where he's anchored. So that's no, this is what the predict wind looks like. Now, you know, neither one is very nice here. <laughs> neither one is very nice. But this one stays this way all the time. This is like his route going out. And once he gets moving, our technique of averaging the past three or four positions um, it, it smooths it out. If you look here, for example, let's see, is it this one? Yeah, see, this th this is one data point. That's one data point. But this here, this report here is actually four positions. One, two, three, four, you know, well, I don't know how many. But there's this that, this actually multiple. That's four points right there. Here's where he really is. And so, let's see, that's just one. So, so it all depends when the, when the uh, I don't know where it's seeing the satellite. It's got to see the sky. It's got to see the sky, and it's got to see several satellites. And when, when the view is limited through one port light or just some slice of the sky, it sees few satellites, and they don't have a good crossing angle, so the positions are terrible. Uh, let's see. Any other notes here I want to relay? Uh, no, that's the main thing. Just a report. He is safe, safely tucked in there. He may be there for a while, but... For a fellow who has been rowing since July 7th of last year, uh, like almost a full year, he has patience. He has patience. And he just has to wait. He's only 30 miles from Cairns. 30 miles away. If you look back here, here's the map. Here's where he is, right? And here's Cairns. And if you take your tool up here, this distance tool, and you drag it from here... Uh, over to here, that's 23 miles, 29 miles. So you see that he's just out. He's just he's almost there. You can probably see the. I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, these are mountains, but I'm not sure. Okay, so that's a, that's a report of what's going on for now, and I'll paste this in a blog that has some other uh, textual notes and links.